Thank you, sir. I rise uh, to support this bill. While supporting this bill, I draw the attention of the government to one crucial issue. That is the identification and recognition of Dalit communities in a comprehensive manner. Earlier, my previous speakers touched upon this issue. The Dalit communities in Tamil Nadu, if they migrate to Maharashtra, they are not recognized as Dalit communities. The Dalit communities in Haryana, if they migrate to Delhi, the national capital, they are not recognized as Dalit communities here. It is an issue. Now, this bill is based on the recommendations of concerned state governments. At the same time, center should address this question because uh, Dalit communities are Dalit communities wherever they go and uh, they must be identified in such a way and recognized in such a way. Having said that, I urge upon the government to follow this with certain concrete measures on certain issues. Number one, the question of reservation. The policy of reservation is the state policy and it has to be implemented effectively at all levels. Sir, now, there is no adequate social representation even in judiciary. The Parliamentary Standing Committee, headed by you, sir, sitting in the chair, made the recommendation that uh, judiciary, there must be reservation or social representation, adequate social representation. Many judges have spoken, but it is not happening. Now, government will have to take this into serious consideration. This is one. The second one, because of the neoliberal economic policies, private sector has emerged as an important component of our economy. The job creation is also taking place in private sector. But private sector is not obliged to implement the policy of reservation. Private sector cannot be above law. Private sector should abide by the policy of the state, policy of the Consumer. country. And there must be reservation in private sector. And there must be a law also to extend reservation in private sector. On one side, the public sector is being privatized and government is patronizing the private sector, giving all concessions, and the time has come, sir, we should demand what is private sector, what is private about private sector. They take all financial help from public sector banks or financial institutions. They get all concessions from the governments. They get everything uh, from land to electricity to water or to concessional rate or free of cost from government. Then they claim that it is private. What is private about private sector? Public sector, we define pu public sector. If government has 51% equity, then it is public sector. We can define. But what is private sector? What is private about private sector? And time has come. We should question that. And we should see that private sector accepts the policy of reservation. And in the name of affirmative action, we cannot leave it to the mercy of private sector. As a government, as a state, we should see that private sector also implements the policy of reservation to SC, SC, and also OBC. This is uh, one point, sir. The second, the second uh, serious issue is ministers should take note what is happening to scheduled cost component plan or tribal sub plan. Earlier, there was planning commission. Planning commission was giving directives to state governments and central ministries for the earmarking of separate funds for scheduled cost component plan and tribal sub plan. Now there is no planning commission. Now Niti Ayog is in work. In <laughs> anyway, now yeah, the Niti Ayog is there. Now, how do you? Now, one side you, one side you are adding the list. One side you are adding the list uh, to the schedule cast. But how do you, how do you ensure that central departments, central ministries, they earmark adequate funds for sub plans? I am asking you. How do you ensure that state governments earmark funds 
for scheduled cost component plan and tribal sub plan. Ministry must take note of this. And there are certain state governments which enacted state legislations to ensure this. As central government, are you going to bring a central legislation to ensure scheduled cost component plan, tribal sub plan? I am asking you. And it is a very serious issue. Then the other issue is atrocities, discrimination against Dalits. I am not getting into all issues. I am raising one pointed issue. Discrimination in the institutions of higher learning, whether it is IITs or central universities. What happened in Hyderabad Central University should open our eyes to the harsh reality that Indian society is facing, Indian nation is facing, sir. Rogit Vemula's death is not simple suicide. It was really an institutional murder. And a bright scholar was forced to take that extreme step. Why should such thing happen in our country? We, on one side, we claim we are a civilized nation. We are a civilized society. But our children, our young boys and girls, are subjected to such extreme hardships. And they take that extreme step of committing suicide. Why should it happen? So as a government, I am asking you, there is a demand to bring a Rogit Act to fight discrimination, to end discrimination against Dalits in the institutions of higher learning. Whether government will apply its mind, whether government will give consideration to this issue. Then I come to the other important issue, sir. We have National Commission on Scheduled Caste. We have National Commission on Tribal Affairs. But what is the power these National Commissions have got? They are all statutory bodies, but they do not have statutory powers. And what for we are having these commissions? I am asking you. And even their reports are not submitted in Parliament, annual reports regularly. Why? Why it should be like that? Human Rights Commission has statutory power. Why can't National Commission on Scheduled Caste? Why can't National Commission on Tribal Affairs have statutory powers? As government, you will have to think on this uh, uh, issue, sir. It is a serious issue. Finally, because this is a bill which adds some more communities from different states to the scheduled caste list. But there is a demand that Dalit Christians want to be treated as Dalits. And Dalit Muslims want to be treated as Dalits. And they also want reservation. Res reservation. There Jala is. Hai, listen, 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 sir. Don't Jala interrupt. Don't interrupt. Don't interrupt. If you have answer, you tell me. If, no, if you have any answer, I will listen to you. Listen, I will listen to you. So, what I am saying, Dalit Christians, Dalit Muslims, they do want reservation. But there is a Supreme Court ceiling. Supreme Court has put a ceiling. Reservation should not exceed 50%. Now, SC, ST, 22.5%, OBC, 27.27%, total 49.5%, that is the reservation. Whereas, Tamil Nadu, there is reservation up to 69%. It is in the ninth schedule. If that can happen in Tamil Nadu, why it cannot happen in other states? Why it cannot happen at national level? If Supreme Court has put that ceiling, center should have the political will to review that Supreme Court order, to ask for a review, and open up, open up. So okay, thank these, you. Are, these are very vital issues, sir, to address the concerns of scheduled caste, scheduled tribe in our country. And now we are passing this bill, but passing this bill will not help, and it should be followed up with sincere, committed, concrete measures by the government. That is the big challenge, but that is the big question I raise before the government. Thank you, sir. Honorable Minister, yes. uh, Honorable Minister, I hope you can uh, reply on that issue of annual report by the scheduled uh, caste and scheduled tribe uh, commissions, because that is a very important thing. I hope you will get the instruction and uh, whether it is yes. annual report. Yes. You, you just mark it and then tell it. Yes, it has been done and we have 
एससी कमीशन की रिपोर्ट को सबमिट किया है संसद में ओके ना 